All right. I want to welcome all of you to this pre-hack webinar for the Youth Innovators in Industry 4.0 Hackathon. I will give the word over to our expert speakers soon, but first give a short introduction. The webinar is being recorded so that it can be watched later if, if there's something you want to come back to or if we have participants who are unable to join at this time. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to our partners, STC and Nokia, who we are honored to work with to enhance the future Industry 4.0 and enhance the youth innovators in Saudi Arabia by using new emerging technologies. Thank you for making this event possible. So the agenda for today. First, we have, as, as of now, some opening words. After this, I will introduce our speaker, Mr. Abdulaziz Alanasi from SDC. And after this, we have our second speaker from C4IR, Dr. Ibrahim Al Shunaifi. And then we have our fourth speaker, Mr. Muhammad Ali Sohail from Nokia. After this, we have our fourth expert speaker, Pekka Sivonen, CEO and founder of BOA. And after the speakers, I will take over once again from Ultrax side to go through some practicalities, how to join the event, how do you find a team, what are the evaluation criteria, all the practical things you need to do, to do and, and know in order to join this event. And lastly, some next steps reminder before we move into a Q&A. Since this is a webinar, you will not be able, able to unmute to ask your questions, so please do write them in the chat. You can wait until the Q&A opening or slot, but you can also write the questions in the chat as you go during this, this webinar at any point, and we take them in the last bit. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker from our partner, STC. Mr. Abdulaziz Alanasi. Hi, uh, Dr. Madlin. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Jimian. This is Abdulaziz Alanasi uh, from STC. I am leading the innovation and R&D enablement section. Uh, and we are uh, happy today to talk about our hackathon this event. So this uh, webinar uh, requested to explore the participation and registration in this hackathon to make it easy for all of you. Uh, at large, the aim of this, or making this hackathon, is to increase the innovation culture and also number of innovators in ICT community in our country, Saudi Arabia. Uh, our focus uh, uh, will be more about the youth, especially the university uh, uh, We have discussed and uh, I mean with our uh, strategic partner uh, for uh, industry revolution in Saudi Arabia. Uh, about we discuss about this team uh, to make sure we can, at the end of this hackathon, as outcomes, we can add value for the community and also the, the local community. Uh, after that, uh, we agree about the team and we <clears throat> discuss with our uh, technology partner, local and their partner, uh, uh, about the preparation for the platform and also the whole plan from, uh, let's say, announcement, registration, uh, till the end of this effort, uh, inshallah, on the 21st of March, to announce the winning uh, teams and ideas uh, to make sure this ideas uh, will. Uh, not only have it as a pitch tick, our ultimate goal to make uh, commercialize the product. Uh, in this webinar, I think you will 
uh, have uh, more information about the theme. Next, I mean, maybe talk. And also the targeted uh, the, the hackathon. Uh, I wish uh, the best for all and thanks a lot. Thank you, Abdulaziz, for for the speech and also for the introduction of the challenges, uh, which we will go into a bit further as well. After this, I would like to directly give over the word to our second speaker of the day, Dr. Ibrahim Al Shunaifi from C4IR. Hello, um, I'll be speaking on behalf of the Dr. Ibrahim today because unfortunately he had something he couldn't uh, attend today. Um, so I'll be introducing the C4IR KSA. However, we do have prepared a couple of slides on the fourth industrial revolution. So whatever you see fit, um, however, if you'd like me to share my screen. Exactly, there we go. Um, so uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, my team member here today, Sara Al-Hudaythi, she's in this call as well. Um, and uh, we here at the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, we are affiliated with the World Economic Forum. We're part of a network of 18 centers around the world uh, where we look into technology, uh, emerging technology policies, uh, policy protocols and frameworks, and we develop that with our uh, partnerships uh, with multiple stakeholders from the government, uh, private sector, academia, civil society, uh, and so on. And uh, together we co-create that and we engage in a lot of knowledge sharing and exchange uh, with the rest of the network and the other affiliate centers. Um, and we do have a number of running projects uh, alongside, uh, all under what we call the World Economic Forum uh, C4IR platforms. So these technology platforms go under artificial intelligence and machine learning, blockchain and digital assets, data policy, and uh, the future of urban transformation. And uh, Dr. Ibrahim Shinefi uh, is leading the Accelerating the Impact of Internet Industrial Internet of Things for Small and Medium Enterprises. Um, and uh, today we're going to be introducing what exactly is Industry 4.0. Thank you. So Industry 4.0, um, it's more than just a buzzword today. It's more about what we're experiencing um, in terms of a transformation or, as they say, a revolution. Uh, because there was a series of revolutions uh, uh, from the 1800s in terms of having the first industrial and then the second and then the third. And today we are in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this term was coined in 2011. Um, and it's all about the increasing interconnectedness over the internet and how today we see the marriage of the physical world as well as the virtual world and that coming together and having to experience daily life uh, with those two worlds. And the first industrial revolution happened from mechanical production and then it followed through to mass production and then early stages of automation, introduction of computers and electronics, and today we're in a digital tech uh, transformation embedded in our daily lives. These are the Industry 4.0 technologies that we see widespread today. Uh, these technologies, they do uh, pose a lot of uh, opportunities, however, they do come with their challenges. And us as a center, we work on mitigating those drawbacks, but at the same time, maximizing the advanced, uh, you know, the advantages of these uh, technologies in a safe, ethical, inclusive way. And uh, these technologies, uh, as you can see in the screen in front of you, span from AI, cybersecurity, cloud computing, mobile technologies, 3D printing, machine to machine, advanced robotics, big data, analytics, Internet of Things and RFID technologies. Um, I won't, uh, we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so I won't go into too much detail on each technology. I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with these technologies, uh, maybe in even 
you know, more detailed. However, um, Internet of Things is more than just sensors. It's more about how we're connecting the world, uh, connecting machines, collect connecting even people and devices into these sensors. And eventually we can get, you know, mass uh, sensors such as smart cities. For example, and these sensors and these connect this connectivity allows for us to collect and exchange data. And speaking of data, big data is is not only a large amount of data, but it's about the large volumes and complex data that traditional data processing methods cannot uh, really uh, encompass or or take in. So big data is all about the collection, transfer, storage, and analysis of these large volumes and complex data. In terms of cloud computing, it's anything that has to do with de delivering uh, on hosted services over the Internet. No devices here, um, no traditional infrastructures. Uh, it's more about cloud computing um, and the as, for example, the virtual machine um, uh, where all of this data uh, is, is being stored. Artificial intelligence, again, is using human intelligence processes into machines and computer systems and having them really programmed in a way where uh, these uh, machines will become, uh, able, they'll, they'll be able to learn and they'll be able to reason and really uh, engage in self-correction uh, when processing data and when uh, carrying out whatever um, tasks they're supposed to be doing. 3D printing, again, is uh, more in the advanced manufacturing side. So it's the construction of any three-dimensional object from a CAD model or a digital 3D model. And uh, th this can be done in different ways as well. Um, and material being built together all through this machine. So, for example, plastics, liquids, powder grains uh, being fused, and typically this is done layer by layer. Cybersecurity um, is really the protection of any computer system or network from any kind of attack, usually from malicious uh, actors that may really disrupt, uh, really leak any data, uh, cause any kind of damage. And it's also one of the biggest uh, challenges that different institutions, uh, different uh, even individuals will be facing uh, on a daily basis the more and more we get connected and use more and more technologies. And then we have the RFID technologies, which are the radio frequency identification. Um, this uses electromagnetic fields to fields, sorry to automatically identify and track tags that are attached to objects. Um, and this can be, uh, you know, such as uh, when we use our car to enter uh, through the door or something like that. And uh, the, the numbers can be used to track, for example, uh, inventory goods. And then advanced robotics is not only just having robots roaming around, it's really for those robots to help and to assist humans. Um, and robotics integrates fields of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, information, mechatronics, electronics, biomedical, and so on. And mobile technology is uh, largely employed in cellular communication systems and any, any other related area. Um, and the key to this is that there would be a network architecture that would allow uh, different transmitters to deliver data on one uh, channel all at the same time. Now, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have later on, either on the center or on anything related to Industry 4.0. Thank you, Donna, so, so much for these insights and, and some inspiration of what technology the participants could use in their hackathon solutions. As said, if you have any questions, write them in the chat now, save them for later and write them in the chat in the end however you see fit, but um, our experts are here to answer your questions, so don't be shy. I am moving on to our third speaker of today, who is representing Nokia, our other partner, and I would like to welcome Mr. Muhammad Ali Sohail to the stage. Thank you so much, Madeline, and I hope I'm audible. Yes. Uh, thank you. 
So I am Muhammad Ali Suhail. I am Principal Advisor, Technical Manager for uh, Technology Innovation in Nokia. And we are joining hands with our strategic partner, STC, to build and evolve the STC Innovation Program. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, extend a warm welcome to all the attendees, potential participants, excellencies, and esteemed professionals from Center of Fourth Industrial Revolution, STC, Nokia, and Ultra Hack. And of course, Pika, who's joining us as a guest speaker from the Accelerator. So Nokia, as a technology leader across mobile, fixed, and cloud network, believe in harnessing the exponential potential of networks, and our solution enable more productive, sustainable, innovative, and inclusive world. Innovation is one of the key drivers of Nokia business. Innovation is where we are turning Industry 4.0 into a powerful reality. Innovation is embedded in Nokia's culture, and its over a centuries-old history is glorified with value-oriented innovations. This motivates us as Nokia to join hands with our key strategic partner like STC to enrich and inculcate the culture of innovation. Therefore, in collaboration with a renowned uh, European firm like UltraHack, we are organizing this distinctively unique hackathon for you. UltraHack has corporate partners like United Nations, NASA, Asian Development Bank, Microsoft, Telia, Ericsson. So it would be a definitely a very delightful experience with a lot of learning opportunity for all of you. Now, just a few minutes on the importance of innovation in technology and business world. Why do we need this uh, the innovation, creativity in technology and in, our, in the business world? The question, why we are creating this setup, stimulating the capable youth of Saudi Arabia? The answer clearly lies in the crucial importance of innovation in business. Innovation adds novelty to the product lines and services, which is very important, crucial point. Made business models more profitable, value-oriented, enrich customer experiences, improve efficiency by simplifying the complexity in the processes, and accelerate growth, not only in the organization, but in the businesses as well. Now, what you should ex expect as a participant, as a potential aspirant from this hackathon? What is the opportunity which lies for you in this journey? A distinctive learning opportunity to pitch your ideas, how and why. We will take you from this journey as well. Opportunity to meet brilliant thinkers, creative minds and innovators. Enjoy diversity of ideas, people, setup and way of doing things. Opportunity to meet experienced mentors, business leaders and technology experts. And opportunity to present your work to the business leaders on an esteemed podium of STC. And last but not the least, it will give you a competitive edge by giving you a worth setting and memorable exposure. Before I conclude my speech, just I would give you just few quick tips before you get into the process. I'm sure that the mentors uh, with which you will be attached with, they will give you some more brilliant ones. But there, there are just a few quick ones that I would like to reiterate for you over here. First of all, including me, all technologists and expert and you as an aspirant, we need to be, have a faith on this, that innovative and creative thinking is the skill of the future. We doesn't have to underestimate it. Coming back to the, the, the quick tips for your hackathon journey, plan to win. It's not to make you over ambitious, but inculcate a sense of planning and preparing well. Brainstorm practical ideas with your team and be fast. A great idea alone cannot be cannot win a hackathon. It's a combination of right strategy, right approach, and the right team that ultimately wins the hackathon. Secondly, just a very basic one, form a good team. Planning is relatively easier. Success depends on the implementation of the plans. It takes a team effort to implement the ideas. When team members have good chemistry, it is easier to work under pressure, build something cool and fast. Third, think through your ideas. After generating the ideas, filter them based on the value they provide. Think like a product owner. Focus on the main problem statement. Who is the end user? What is your hypothesis? What problem you are going to solve for them? Fourth, validate your concept. Let's not jump to the conclusions about the concepts without researching. Be clear on what you are building and why. Share the dependencies, priorities, and checkpoints with the team and during the hackathon with, the, with your mentors. Know your audience. I would emphasize this point. 
it's always good to get to know your organizers, find out who they are and the evaluation criteria. This will help you to customize your submissions and final presentation accordingly. And lastly, invest time for the presentation. A good presentation is the key to win. Picture your perfect demo and work backward from there. Incorporate the right message and highlight the key features of your product. Try to keep it as simple as possible. Explain what problem your product is solving, how it is different from the competitors, and share market statistics to back your assumptions if available. Be prepared for the questions from the judges. Don't shy away. Don't forget to share your experience as a team and the reasons for pursuing the idea. Practice the pitch and try to make it more interactive. With all this, I wish you all the best for the hackathon journey. And we are available over here for your questions and answers. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you, Muhammad. And I could not agree more with everything you just said. So participants take in these tips these incentives of, of why you should and, and want to join this hackathon and what you can get out of it. So thank you. And those were very important words. I am again moving forward to our fourth and last speaker before I take over again. Mm -hmm. And I am welcoming our Finnish speaker, Pekka Sivonen. Please, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Madeleine, and uh, thanks for all the organizers for inviting me. Best greetings from uh, an event here in Barcelona. I've been participating for 25th time for the Mobile World Congress, where STC seems to be the bad sponsor. Uh, there's 90,000 people from mobile industry here, and uh, it's been a great event for third day now. I'm going to uh, walk you through on multiple things and I'm going to paint you a picture where are we heading to as a world, as humanity. I'll be covering some mega trends uh, uh, that we're going to see changing the world dramatically by 2030. I'm going to uh, showcase how Finland uh, has been tackling these challenges and uh, then I'm going to drill down into the vertical areas of uh, tourism, manufacturing, telecom and education to give you a hint where you should be looking for new solutions. Next, please. So who's talking? <clears throat> I'm 61 year uh, uh, in age uh, with a background of uh, 30 years of collaboration with Nokia. Uh, I just finished my seven year stint within Finnish government uh, in December. Uh, uh, I've been having multiple roles, uh, naturally because I'm so uh, old. Uh, I've <laughs> had the luxury of uh, uh, establishing 50 plus companies. Uh, I've been sharing the, uh, the future committee of for our national strategy for Finland for 2030. And uh, I've been working as a side job as a digitalization expert uh, for European Commission, World Economic Forum and World Bank, uh, including my role as a uh, high level advisor on artificial intelligence for European Commission. Uh, I have a software entrepreneur background, 30 plus years as an entrepreneur, having founded two Nasdaq listed companies, DGF and QT Technology, have been ranked three times in a row as the Entrepreneur of the Year in Finland 2004, 5 and 6. And uh, during my seven year stint within Finnish government, I was working uh, as a digitalization uh, program portfolio lead uh, and strategic director for Finnish Innovation Funding Agency, Business Finland, uh, steering uh, the programs related to platform economy, artificial intelligence, 5G, industrial internet, mixed reality and smart city. And last two years I've been responsible for uh, the liaison office for European Union on behalf of Finland. Now working as a private consultant and uh, giving advisory uh, globally. Next one, please. And it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. <clears throat> so if we look into the world, how it looks like now 
uh, having just passed uh, COVID-19, which was a major disruption worldwide. Now we are suffering from the phenomena of uh, Ukraine war, another great disruption. And uh, hopefully the war will be ended very soon because this is the agenda that humanity should be putting its uh, brain capacity and, and also investments into. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in technology, in demographic change, globalization, environment. Uh, we are uh, seeing a massive uh, wave of decarbonization of uh, society, technology very omnipresent digitalization basically fundamentally changes everything, including our thinking, how we work and and, and play, uh, how the healthcare is going to be organized, how the nutrition will be taken care of in the future, because 3D printers are going to <clears throat> uh, also print your dinner cakes and we will be eating <clears throat> basically synthetic meat and uh, synthetically uh, manufactured uh, this and that. So a lot of changes there and, and tremendous amount of uh, business opportunities arising. Next one. <clears throat> if we go a little bit uh, further and deeper into <clears throat> these areas where where we should look at and how things will be different in the future. Uh, of course, the technology push uh, will be there. Connectivity and convergence of, of things uh, is massive. I've been working uh, with mobile industry since uh, uh, the uh, emergence of uh, second generation network works and we are now working uh, to lay out the sixth generation and of course 5G is still in our hands and it's it's in an evolution phase. A lot of things happening there and we are having the luxury of having technologically uh, basically anything that we ever dreamed of uh, uh, in our hands and available for for change. Cognitive area, <clears throat> uh, deep learning, AI, machine learning, tremendous impact. If we think about chat GPT alone, how it has, has changed for uh, uh, painting pictures, uh, photos, uh, uh, writing things. Uh, last three months has been a tremendous change in that in that respect alone. And this is just the beginning. Bricks to clicks, smart is the new green, social, social trends are changing, new business models are evolving, uh, health and wellness, we are uh, taking finally the steps in order uh, to change the and revolutionize the healthcare from a fashion where we have been fixing the broken bones and uh, uh, sick people. We are moving by the powers of digitalization into an era where we will be preemptively taking care of well-being and health instead of spending our money in, in fixing uh, whatever is broken. A lot of things are innovating to zero. We want to uh, introduce in, in basically any industry, Every, everything's looking and chasing for sustainability. Economic trends are changing. Urbanization, it's a uh, never stopping uh, trend. People will be uh, by 2050, most of the humanity will be living in cities. Uh, so definitely need to pay attention to that. Tomorrow's infrastructure will be very different. Uh, energy issues, Saudi Arabia, uh, absolutely a big player there in the past, but also in the future, because you have the solar and, and, and you have multiple sources of energy there. So. Uh, definitely an interesting area. Future of mobility uh, also changing. Next one, please. Uh, I won't spend too much time uh, on these ones, but uh, the materials will be uh, 
distribute it to all the participants and uh, uh, to have a proper view. And uh, there's a lot of food for thought in terms of understanding what's transhumanism about, uh, how the world will be accelerating towards uh, increased autonomous uh, uh, things and phenomena, how our lives will be changing into uh, connections will be uh, very, very omnipresent by 2025 already. It is estimated that all of us will have an average of seven connected devices. Think about how, how connected the world will then be. Uh, we are today talking about uh, Industry 4.0, but there's already plans for Industry 5.0. Uh, digital reality uh, is the new frontier of technology. Uh, we are moving into from uh, actual reality towards virtual and uh, extended realities. Very fascinating and, and very transformative powers there as well. Uh, in terms of uh, changing our industries. And of course, as a result of all of this, uh, the society will change. Next one, please. Data is the new oil. Uh, it will be the ultimate driver for uh, capturing value. This is something where the Americans and the Chinese have been leading the game. Europe is finally getting its act together by massive amounts of uh, legislation and legal frameworks in uh, uh, data economy. And uh, it's just the beginning of this. So if you ever thought that um, the world is being owned and, and, and uh, dominated by companies like Google and Apple forever. It's not the case. This is just the beginning. And uh, a couple of years back, uh, we had about 2% of the data that we are going to have by 2030. So if you think about that, that 98% uh, of the, the market is still there of the future market. So never give up in thinking what kind of opportunities this will uh, uh, propose to you. We are uh, in any field of life, we are going to see uh, massive uh, involvement of intelligent digital assistance. AI truly revolutionizing uh, the way we think uh, about and, and how we work. Uh, Uberization of industries, what Uber did for, for transportation, uh, that phenomena is being uh, spread uh, into many industries and anybody who can do it is following uh, the example. World needs to be saved from environmental um, point of view and uh, zero world is the ultimate goal uh, in terms of uh, carbon emissions and uh, we in Finland believe that saving the world has to be a good business because everybody's changing for it but it's a different thing who who can actually do it in, in practice. Platform economy very meaningful zero latency work world uh, by increased speeds in connectivity uh, this is definitely something that is uh, also having a major impact. Next one, please. Uh, so those were the changes, how the world will be uh, dramatically uh, changing over the next decade. And uh, now I'm, since this is the thing that I know best and I've been spending uh, over the last five years, five billion euros, uh, taxpayers and, and companies money in in uh, increasing the capacity and capabilities of Finland as a society and uh, uh, our economy. Uh, I'm going to now explain what's going on in Finland and uh, if there's something to be maybe learned and uh, maybe opportunities for collaboration when uh, Saudi Arabia uh, wants to evolve and speed up the developments in, in, for example, 
building new smart cities of the future like Naomi's. I'll come back to that later. Next one, please. Finland is doing fine. Uh, we are number one in digitalization in Europe uh, by a ranking from uh, European Commission fifth time in a row as the happiest nation in the world, uh, attracting most investments of all, all of the Nordic countries and the others one other ones are not bad either. So we are quite nicely positioned, but none of these positions came for granted. We had to fight for, for our position and uh, it's a systemic approach that a country needs to, to have in terms of get you there where, where you are. And uh, next one, please. Of course, investment to future generations and education is the natural explanation why why Finland has all of this today. And uh, in technology alone, because of uh, 170 years of Nokia, uh, Congratulations, by the way, on the new strategy and uh, and uh, corporate image, which is very welcomed here. Very busy booth at the, the trade show. Uh, Finland, because of Nokia, we have all of this uh, because Nokia has been the major powerhouse in, in various fields of developing technology. And uh, even if uh, the company no longer is in consumer devices, we still have the, the people and the talent who developed the, the mobile user interfaces, did the augmented reality uh, technologies, uh, AI, uh, data science scientists, etc. So it all starts with, with the competency uh, that you have available for you and that that's the basis the, the the ground level based on which you will be building the upper layers of of your uh, the activities in the society next one please uh, when looking into the layout and uh, uh, the the blueprint how the world will be looking uh, into by 2030 the growth areas that uh, were available for Finland are listed on on the left column here and uh, the ones when when designing and defining on the strategy where Finland is going to go to uh, we opted these five options on the right hand digitalization based boost for productivity comprehensive health and well-being carbon neutral and resilient energy system zero waste and circular economy and uh, engaging immersive experiences based on the knowledge that we had in in developing uh, worldwide uh, blockbuster games next one please and uh, Today, uh, this is uh, one of the last programs that I, I was uh, part of um, in, in launching in the, uh, in the country. Uh, we launched a campaign to rethink digitalization because the previous phases of uh, digital skills and what we did in the society, uh, i.e. making people use the basic uh, uh, features of digital society and digital company are not enough in the future and uh, we we've been uh, digitalizing things putting everything that used to be on on paper everything's now electronic but that's not enough we we need to evolve uh, from um, uh, where we are today into uh, new fashion, how to work and how the businesses, what kind of a logis, lo, logics are they working, uh, uh, working on and what kind of business models they are using, how they are using AI, how they are using uh, uh, big data and so forth. And uh, uh, we already have several unicorns, Ivan, you probably uh, didn't hear about that, Relax, another one. A vault a supercell many people know uh, that's a decacorn not a unicorn actually it was sold for 10 billion to to the chinese so 
lot of opportunities there, and uh, we are accelerating in terms of uh, uh, speeding up uh, the digitalization nationwide. Next one, please. Uh, digitalization provides uh, an ultimate opportunity to increase productivity in society, be it government or be it any basically business. And uh, uh, actually our goal, and this is very aggressive, is to increase the GDP of the whole country by 30% with this one. That's that's tens of billions of euros uh, for national uh, product for Finland. And uh, it's very aggressive, but uh, this is definitely something we are insisting that we need to do. And, and we are doing it based on uh, 5G and 6G connectivity. They have a pivotal role uh, in this technological leadership. And uh, of course, data, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and quantum technologies are helping us there. And I would say that this is not just specific for Finland. This one applies very much for a country like Saudi Arabia as well. Next one, please. Sustainable, which is a mega trend. Everybody is chasing after it it equals to digitalization. Digitalization means sustainability. And uh, we've done a white paper to European Union where we are uh, testifying that, uh, uh, and we, we are providing the uh, research results that digitalization, when used uh, the maximum way, can, uh, reduce the carbon dioxide bill of all of Europe by 30% by 2030. Uh, 2030. So this is how, how key digitalization uh, is uh, for sustainability and well-being of a nation and in Europe's case, the continent. And of course, when developing these things, we're not developing them for Finland because even in Nokia's case, Finland never was bigger than 1% share of the company's global market. Finland is like a small scale lab, very good lab to develop things to be used and deployed by the rest of the world. Next one, please. And uh, in order to make this digital native uh, country happen, of course, same paradigm as eating an elephant applies here. How do you eat it? You you put it in slices and then you 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 cut it and 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 so we have multiple nationwide programs: Digital Trust Finland, Smart Life Finland, New Space Economy, Sustainable Manufacturing Finland, Experience Commerce, Personalized Health Finland, and others. But these are the key building blocks in terms of making the digital native Finland happen in real world conditions. Finns are known to be very pragmatic, and uh, we are. <laughs> Next one, please. So, we are dramatically accelerating the digital transformation of the society and all of our key industries. And uh, digital is the great enabler of saving our planet. And uh, of course, we're not alone here, we are looking for global collaboration. And uh, I would love to see a very tight collaboration in in uh, between Saudi Arabia and uh, Finland in terms of capitalizing what each of us has. I'm a true believer on ecosystem approach because we don't have all the knowledge in Finland. Saudis and other countries have uh, talent and uh, knowledge and a smart people to, to solve the wicked problems that we are having. And uh, therefore, it's an open call for collaboration uh, for our mutual benefits. With that, 
30% increase in GDP goal, we are also having a nationwide goal to evolve in World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Index from uh, 0.7 to number one position. That's aggressive as well, as well as the OECD digital government ranking. Uh, we are, well, actually, we are already there, uh, uh, number one, but it doesn't mean that we can sit down and rest in our laurels. We need to run fa even faster there to stay where we are. Number one position is always, and keeping it, is always uh, a challenge. A nice challenge to have, I would say. Next one, please. Moving on to task of the day, uh, kind of explaining what are the consequences of these things and, and the assets that, that Finland and some other countries might have in driving the change and uh, uh, revolutionizing how tourism industry, telecom, and education uh, will look like in the future, understanding extended reality and how elementary it will be in terms of taking us into the metaverses uh, is really key. Next one. Uh, and uh, when thinking about and designing for this new reality, which will be not just somewhat blurred, it will be very blurred because the borderlines between the actual reality and uh, virtual extended realities will be very difficult to, to define. So you need to slice how, wh what is the actual reality today that you, 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 you want to start enhancing with technology. You need to check the data reality, uh, evolve into phase of digital twins of reality. Then you need to uh, look at the, the components of data management, interoperability interfaces, and so forth. And moving on to user interfaces and interactivity according to the use case, and then into the vertical specific services and uh, the services and, and solutions. Uh, this might help you in terms of understanding how complex all of this is and, and how, if we move on to the next one, what kind of a building blocks are being needed. Actually, it's on, 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 on another slide, but it's going to come. Uh, the, the extended reality uh, that will be taking us into the metaverse will dramatically uh, revolutionize the way <clears throat> how we do simulation and surveillance, how we do planning and design, training, education, maintenance in various industries, including gaming and entertainment, because the world is taking major steps towards being very entertaining in the future. Uh, next one, please. And. Uh, Thanks to Nokia, uh, Finland has all of this to 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 offer to the world, including the manufacturing of uh, Hololens uh, device. It's been manufactured in Finland, but it it originally was a Finnish invention uh, from the University of uh, Joensuu, and and Finland has uh, because of Nokia and the investments that we've been doing in this area. Uh, taking, uh, helping us take it, uh, the steps needed to the act, uh, virtual reality, extended reality and, and metaverses. Uh, there's a very uh, lively ecosystem to support all elements of the value chain. Next one, please. Here are the technologies and the, 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 the taxonomy, uh, what is being needed for VR and AR. And uh, it's very complex, I have to say, and uh, uh, it will help you if you have people who really understand uh, what you are dealing with and uh, 
some of the projects that that you might have have in mind you probably don't know about a company called Vario, but but if you go to vario.com uh, you will understand better how the vertical that you might have in mind uh, could benefit if they had a display and uh, a device which uh, provides you uh, human eye resolution the same quality of resolution in 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 uh, extended reality lenses like you have normally. So it's a great asset to have and uh, that can be provided. Next one, please. So this is the value chain of extended reality and uh, uh, there's many, many steps that you really need to understand in, in order to, to be able to do meaningful uh, stuff and value creation in this domain. Next one, please. Moving on to the verticals of this hackathon, tourism, uh, very big industry, 14% uh, of all European GDP in some of the countries like Spain, where I am today, it's more than 30%. So it's very, very uh, big industry globally the biggest one and uh, of course it's in a dramatic change internet alone has revolutionized the way we do travel today and cheap air for fares cheap air air travel uh, that we've had uh, is of course boosting it and uh, covid was a major hiccup for the industry but now it's it's basically back in the levels where we saw it before 2019 and uh, of course Saudi Arabia and uh, other other Arabic countries are investing a lot in st this space uh, with concepts like uh, Neom the News uh, Smart City and uh, the key thing to understand uh, here when thinking about tourism industry is that Technology will be there before, during, and after the visit. And and this is basically the the, the main takeaway when thinking about the tourism industry of the future. Can I have next slide? How people when they are planning a visit to Neon, for example, in the future, how they will be making the decision uh, to go there, how they are going to be marketed and how they are going to be lured in uh, as a customer to visit, it, how they are going to use technology when they are there, how they are going to share socially to their networks what they are seeing uh, there as we speak. Uh, so. Technology will be helping us to extend the experience before, during, and after the visit into a specific place. Next, next slide, please. And uh, some of the things that we might see as we speak might not be there at all. We are just enhancing the views like this bridge there. I don't know exactly does it exist or not, but it could be a, an extension to actual reality. And this is exactly what I meant with blurring the actual reality and uh, its extensions towards metaverse. It will be very difficult to really separate the things that are representing the actual reality and somebody's uh, imagination in the future. Endless amount of business opportunities uh, and technologies there to provide this. It's just, it all depends on your mind what you can imagine. And the sky is no longer the limit here. Next one, please. We will be going to the moon, all of us, if we want to. And uh, 
virtual virtual travel uh, will be uh, available for us very soon. And uh, actually, Nokia, by the way, is already erecting a 4G uh, mobile network to Moon with uh, NASA and, and uh, some other partners. So once once you get there. We will be visit, visiting the near the near planets physically also, but uh, uh, to, it, it's going to all begin with a virtual visit. Next, uh, I was in a launch event yesterday where Nokia, European Space Agency, and Great Britain announced a collaboration where Nokia will be licensing to ESA and uh, uh, and the ecosystem the. 360 video streaming compression technology, which will be enabling that basically all of our kids can sit in a, uh, a space module and look like 360. How does the astronaut see things now as we speak? So the fast communication networks they will be uh, enabling us as and the technology is available there to take us wherever we like to be i.e you can be in places where you don't have to be physically next one please education very very big in another industry uh, facing a tremendous change because of digitalization and uh, learning and uh, uh, educating people uh, is a continuous challenge for all of us and uh, technology is dramatically changing it. Next one please. It's going to be highly distributed in the future basically the old concept and paradigm of a class classroom that's dead and uh, everything will be in the network everything will be digital and uh, the next generations will really uh, uh, use this as a runway to 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 take the world into the next level and of course teleoperators are, are having uh, nationally a great responsibility of making all of this happen uh, 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 nationwide. Next one, please. The future of schools, how the schools will look like 2040. That's a good question. And uh, 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 this is a think tank uh, wallpaper uh, of uh, certain uh, specialists in this area. And uh, I would say that education will move and it will evolve into a social play. It will be mm, uh, happening like like we do social media today. That's my bet on how uh, learning will happen in the future in a distributed environment enabled by by the operators. Next one, please. Manufacturing, because of all of, of the areas that I covered earlier, is facing uh, dramatic change. Robots, IoT, big data, 3D printing, blockchain, all these are having a massive impact on, on how the industries will look like in the future. Next one, please. And yet another very complex thing uh, to un understand what what really needs to be done and uh, uh, a lot of technology components that need to be put together uh, for the benefit of the company and uh, uh, production it's a big challenge and uh, but the benefits are in evident and uh, if you go on to the next one. Uh, digital technologies will in many ways help us to do better products and uh, uh, 
to customize products and uh, a lot of the things and phases of uh, manufacturing things uh, starting from planning phases uh, will uh, be very much streamlined because you can basically uh, start planning for uh, production of series of one one physical uh, product and uh, uh, the the face is that for example the cylinder that the guy is having uh, in front of him uh, uh, to be looked with the goggles uh, doesn't have to be physically manufactured until it's ready and uh, you can basically streamline the planning and production process into to to cut all of the previous phases which were f physical uh, away and thereby boost the uh, time to market and uh, cost efficiency of the production and, and developing a new product next one please this is a german illustration how the factory of the future will look like uh, the robots they will be uh, working uh, by utilizing fifth and sixth generation mobile networks they will be wireless and and therefore the factory floor will be fluid there's no rigid structures wires benches and and so forth they can be totally free space and and the robots are are doing uh the things uh autonomously if that's the way you want to have and of course there will be before we get there, there will be the phase where people will be uh, working to go together in collaboration with cobots. That's a collaborative robot, and uh, that will be a major, major boost for productivity in uh, many countries and uh, Europe and America, for example, have suffered uh, a lot. Uh, during the last two decades because of the cheaper labor costs in Asia. Uh, and uh, if you take the labor cost away, like 90%, it doesn't play any difference where the factory is. It's actually uh, more, more like a, a factor of the energy pricing uh, that will define where the production will be. So in that respect, I would foresee that Saudi Arabia, for example, has a great opportunity in, in terms of attracting production into the country uh, once it's being done uh, the, the new, new fashion way. Next one, please. Moving on to telecom industry, which is actually sitting at the crossroads of all of the things mentioned before. Artificial intelligence, 5G, uh, big data, IoT, it all gets combined and intertwined in, at the server rooms and the routers of a telecom operator. So you are sitting as C STC, you are sitting at that at very, very uh, defining po uh, point where where uh, you are enabling the su success uh, of uh, various value chains. Next one, please. And the things where, where uh, a lot of attention and activity has to be put, first of all, 5G as fast rollout as possible. Space will be available for us for 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 uh, new fashion uh, and i understand that uh, you also have activity uh, in that direction data as i said earlier data economy uh, and platform economy how to monetize on data it's computing because future devices they will basically be having at the size of a cellular phone, we will be having supercomputer powers uh, uh, very soon. Cybersecurity, not to even mention post-quantum security, uh, when 
everything that we today have secured in our infrastructure, digital critical infrastructure, will be unsafe once Russia and China, for example, have the capacity for uh, quantum computing. This is something we need to start protecting and developing towards. Not then, but now. New generation of services evolving blockchain. Phenomena that alone will change the world more than Internet ever did. Definitely worth understanding and diving through biometrics, virtual fi finance. Let's move on. Next one, please. Quantum communications is another fascinating thing changing the telecom because the satellites will be transmitting the information at the speed of light in the future when we are moving into quantum communications that will not just happen in the land, but also via uh, satellites uh, flying above us. And this will dramatically boost uh, the availability of, uh, of bandwidth, uh, but also the safety and security and speed of communications once uh, we have these technologies available for us. This is a picture from NASA. Next one, please. To wrap all of uh, the above mentioned together, the way I see about future is a phase where our physical worlds will be merged with the digital world and our human worlds. And uh, technology will be changing humanity the way we've understood and perceived it so far. And therefore, it's very critical for, for a nation, be it Saudi Arabia or Finland or whoever, to understand who you are dealing with in terms of uh, what are the technologies, where they are coming from, can you trust them? Are they inclusive uh, from your society point of view? And are they being made uh, in a sustainable fashion? And this is where I would like to end brainstorming you, if I can have the last slide, please. I would like to thank you for your attendance and, and my apologies that I did some overtime. Thank you. I will be with you uh, with all the teams. Uh, Johanny has asked me to, to coach uh, the teams uh, going forward uh, into the actual hackathon uh, phase and uh, really uh, great honor to be part of the process here. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Pekka. And I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say, wow, what an insight into the importance of this challenge, first of all. And I'm sure that the team's got a lot of ideas on each and every topic of the challenge. So big, big, big thank you. Thank you. And as said, Pekka will be joining us as a mentor as well in the hackathon itself. So all the invited teams will be hearing more and getting some personal insights in your own projects from Pekka later on. Then I will take over the show and uh, go through all the practicalities and how do you actually join this challenge? Now you know what the challenge topics are. You probably have some ideas on what your own project is going to be. But how do you apply and how can you join? First of all, I'd like to go through the timeline a bit on all the important milestones and, and deadlines that are coming before the hackathon itself. First of all, from if you haven't yet, uh, from today on all the way until the 13th of March at 23.59 local time in Saudi Arabia, you can register to the event and find your team and register a project submission. 
basically every participant has to register individually on the challenge page and I'll show you in just a, a bit how that's done live here on our challenge page as well. After this, you can register a project idea, a project submission, explaining what the idea is going to be, which challenge topic do you want to focus on, what is, what is your project and what will you present at the hackathon. And all team members can then join this submission after everyone has, has created their profile. This has to be done before the 13th of March. So all persons, all teams and their submission need to be registered on the UltraHack page by this date. The day after, we will have a team selection process together with our partners where we go through all the submission texts and choose which 10 teams to invite to the hackathon. So keep your eyes open for an onboarding and welcoming in invitation letter over your email on the 14th or 15th of March. Here you will have all the onboarding information, all the links, all the practicalities, where to be and when in order to attend the hackathon. Here you will also get a confirmation form that you will have to sign to in, in part confirm your participation so that we know that you will actually be joining. Almost immediately after, on the 16th of March, we will have a Meet the Mentors session. This is the first touch point of your projects and our expert mentors. As, as I might have said earlier, if not, I say it now, us at UltraHack, we're, we're professionals in organizing and facilitating hackathons, but when it comes to the topic of the hackathon and the solutions, we have invited expert mentors to help you out with all of that. So your project submissions will be taken care of. In this Meet the Mentor session, each team will have a few minutes, two, three minutes to explain their idea, the project, the idea behind, what are you going to work on during the hackathon, and you will get your first comments from the mentors as well. This way you can develop your solutions a bit before the actual hackathon and you don't have to come in on with a clean start and empty handed to the hackathon itself on the 19th of March. Finally, on the 19th to the 21st of March, we have the hackathon itself. This is a hybrid version, so if you are living nearby or in Riyadh, you can join in Riyadh, the STC head headquarters, and you can also join online over Microsoft Teams. How do you find your team if you don't have one? First of all, we go back to what, where I started, register to the event individually. You can introduce yourself in your profile, meaning your skills, your maybe ideas for the challenge that you might have. What would you like to work with and what team members are you looking for? If you don't have a team and you want to immediately go into an existing submission instead of coming up with your own project idea, you can browse the existing submissions on the website and I'll show this feature as well to you. You can browse through the submissions, the participants that have already applied, and you can message people or request to join interesting teams. And again, as a repetition, all this has to be done by the 13th of March at 23.59. And the next steps, again, will be the team selection and the meet the mentors on the 16th of March, and then the hackathon itself. Since the timeline is so short and tight, I advise all participants who register to the hackathon to already put the 16th of March in your calendars. Even though you ultimately would not be selected to the hackathon, please have it in your calendars because if you are lucky enough to be invited to this hackathon, you are entitled and you know for sure that you can make it to that session. How to register? I will change into the challenge page like this. So welcome to the Youth Innovators in Industry 4.0 Hackathon challenge page. Here you can see all of the information about the hackathon itself. We go through all the four different challenge topics that both the partners and Becca mentioned. 
and you also can see our prices, resources, and learn all about our partners. As I mentioned earlier, you can browse through the, the existing participants and submissions over here and enjoy, uh, enjoy the ideas and get some inspiration from other partners and participants and also join existing teams if that's what you want. You also see our schedule for the hackathon so you already know what to expect. And again, all of this that I'm explaining now comes in the how to join tab as well. So if you forget, go back and rewatch this video or visit this tab. And some questions that are frequently asked, we have answered here already for you. On the right column, then you see all the webinar info, and this is also where you can you can watch the recording after. But how do you apply? First of all, if you've never been to our page, you need to sign up and sign in. This is done by signing up like this and writing in your email. I'm going to choose one that has never been on this page before. By doing this, you will get a confirmation code in your email that you then write in. And just a second, I'll do it as I go. So this is really authentic. There we go. You can also decide to subscribe to our newsletter to stay on top of all our relevant um, hacks and other events. Then we confirm. What then happens is that you are able to write in your name. Uh, this already knows my info, so it's starting to fill up. Uh, if you're new to this challenge page, all, everything will be blank. And of course, the, the country here will already show Saudi Arabia. So it's just because I'm, I'm visiting our page frequently. So you put in your name, your city, your country, and your status. Are you a student, employee, STC employee, or, or else? Then we put in our student idea or STC employee number. You can also choose your university out of a list of universities. And if um, none of those universities are, is yours, you can type other and then type your university here. This is important as everything else. Uh, please choose if you will be joining on site in Riyadh or online over Microsoft Teams so we know how to facilitate you best. And then put in some of your skills. What would you like to join us? You can put several or only one. And lastly, what tracks are you interested in out of these four? So check one, two, three or four boxes. Then we have your short info here. Um, who are you? What are your skills? What are you looking to do? So on. And if you want to add your LinkedIn profile or a CV or something like this, this is where you do that. Then we submit. What happens next is that you can enter a submission. So we have our project name here, and we have again a short description of your um, project itself. So just a tagline, a few words, what are you going to do? And here you have to choose only one track uh, because, as Pekka already mentioned, these are huge areas and there's a lot of thought and and content in all of these four tracks. So choose only one to stay focused during the event. And then submit. Now you have a profile, you have a submission. But if you want to edit or, or add or do any adjustments, you can edit your profile here on the, on the same, same page still. And you can also add more details to your submission. It opens up a view like this, where you can write the problem more in detail, maybe the solution, what tech are you going to use, do you have a business plan, all of these things. You can also choose a cover photo or, or anything like this. Most importantly, or as important, you can add team members here. So when uh, one of your team members has signed up with their own profile, you can invite them over this tag. So you write their name here. And don't forget to click update so that we see the newest version of your project submission. And that is it. That is how we create our projects for the hackathon. Then I will go back in.
and keep keep going. So as I mentioned earlier, the teams will be selected based on the submission text. So we read through your project submissions. But what will we select on? What is the criteria? I will tell you now. So we have six different criteria that we will go through in each submission text. So try to make sure that you cover all of these topics. First of all, we go through the impact of your chat of your project. Has the team identified a clear purpose for their initiative? The second is scalability. Is, it, is the solution likely to be attractive to several stakeholders, customers, users? Thirdly, do you have a business plan presented in your project submission? Fourth, innovativeness. Since this is a hackathon, we're looking for new things, open innovation. Is the solution innovative? Is it more effective, efficient than existing approaches? Is it new or does it already exist? Then we will go through the technical capabilities of your project. Will you leverage new emerging technologies in some form? Since that is a requirement of this hackathon and it's in the theme name. And lastly, we go through the team. So is your team consisting of two to four members? And are you young innovators? And again, this is uh, might sound sound like a lot, but it's uh, it's not too bad. I'm sure when you go through through your projects, you you'll be able to to cover all of these things. So no stress there, and uh, make sure to have these in mind. At the end of the hackathon, then, uh, when thinking one step forward, the deliverables that you will deliver at the end of the hackathon on the 21st of March, we will ask you to send in a recorded video pitch with a pitch deck uh, explaining everything that you've done on the hackathon and what is the final solution. We're also going to look for the business value in your final solution again at the end of the hackathon. And again, was this an innovative idea? Encouraged to, but not mandatory, is for you to come up with some sort of demo or prototype that you could also add add into your pitch at the end of the hackathon. So this is again one step further, but might be good to keep in mind already. Ingredients to a, even if not winning, but a functioning team. I would suggest that you start searching for team members early, already today if you don't have them. Two people can of course form a winning team, but the workload during the hackathon will be much more evenly divided if you're a bit of a larger team, three to four people. Your team should be based on common interest, of course, in a challenge and common interest in your solution. So you're all on the same page of what challenge topic you want to solve and you believe in your solution and your project. And again, if you're more people, you probably have more skill sets that complement each other, uh, which is also important. Lastly, but very important, Prepare in advance. You don't need to wait until the first day of the hackathon to come in. You can already do some research, look into your market, your databases, audiences, all of this uh, that, you, that you basically can do that is available for you already before. This way, the quality at the end of the hackathon is, is most likely also better. So after all of this information, a next steps reminder for you guys. Sign up first of all on the challenge page, contact interesting people, send in your submission, and all of this by the 13th of March. And then keep your inboxes open and wait for that selection announcement email. You will get one even though you are selected or you are not selected to the hackathon. So you don't have to sit and wait around and wonder. We will let all of you know the status after the deadline. And after this, follow the instructions for the onboarding of your participation in the hackathon, meaning confirm your participation, be at the Meet the Mentor session, and then finally come to our hackathon. If you need any help, you have any questions, please reach out to me, uh, Madeline Kivikangas, 
to I'll help you out with anything related to the to the registration process or even the the challenge topic itself. As Becca said, I'll be sending out the slide deck and the recording to all of you after this, and that's how you will get my email right into your inbox, so it's easy to contact me. Big, big thanks for listening on this information spam, and uh, now I would open the floor for some questions and answers. These questions can be to the speakers, to to the organizers, anything related to the challenge topic, the location or other practicalities or anything you can think of. Now is the time. Write your questions in the chat and uh, we will look for them and, and I can read them out and have whoever is relevant to answer them. Okay, Madeline. Let's take the first question related to the process of the hackathon from Mr. Numan Khan. So this question is related to you. Team selection criteria will be applied on 13th of March or on 21st of March. Very and good secondly, question. Yes, yeah. go ahead. And secondly, what winners should expect to get after winning? Yes, so the team selection criteria is, as said, for the team selection only after the 13th of March. On the 21st of March, we will have the same ground rules almost for the evaluation criteria. And we can also share that actually in advance so that you can also take a look uh, at the final uh, criteria for the end of the hackathon. But since we didn't want to confuse you and have you focus only on the first project submission now, that's the team selection criteria only. As for what the winners get, we have the prices of our event and for the winning teams also stated on the website. So you will get hackathon certificates and recognition by STC and C4IR in KSA. And also STC will support making the MVP for the winning and innovative ideas. Okay, there's another question. Uh, I believe it is related to the Pika Savonen, again from the uh, Numan Khan. Uh, if you allow, uh, Madeline, can you open up the mic of uh, Numan so that he can clarify this question? The question is that how are the human world and the physical world different? So we would like to have some more elaboration of the question, and I would request Pika to answer that. Yes, now Man, you should be able to open your mic now and ask your question again. Uh, hi, uh, thanks. Uh, actually, this was related to one of the slides uh, presented by uh, Pika. I think it was in the end. Uh, so he differentiated the, the future world into three, digital, human and physical. So I was trying to understand that what is the difference between human and physical world? Becca, do you want to take this one? Uh, do I have an option? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what we mean with this, uh, uh, the the virtual world, the actual world, and and human world. Uh, human world basically means uh, more kind of a how we perceive the things, uh, and. Uh, it's um, yeah. Things in in the actual real world are the way they are, and and then there's the the uh, digital world, uh, and uh, it's about perception and kind of a psychological and uh, mental uh, way how we see things when everything seems to be blurred. So we have we are having a difficulty in in terms of understanding what is what because you can almost touch the things and you will be touching the things that don't exist. Uh, so uh, it will be an environment where it will be mentally challenging for us as human beings and uh, yeah. Maybe that's the best answer that, that I can offer today, but uh, 
we can come back to this issue. I will find out more information about it. What we actually, it, because it wasn't a slide by myself. I just got it this morning and uh, I need to find out uh, what is the actual meaning of it. Uh, I, I think I, I got at least some part that uh, the perception of reality will be different in the future. So human mind would have to adjust to that. So thank, thank you. Very Exa much. Exactly. You got it right. Yes, Diana, you raised your hand. Go ahead. Yes, um, if you don't mind me adding, um, just from our perception as well, that the human world versus physical and digital, um, physical, from from my knowledge, is you know anything that comes to the earth, the mountains, the sea, everything that is around us, uh, nature-wise, and the human world is how we humans interact together and all the societal aspects that come with that and the sociological and and then you have obviously the digital world so in terms of the digital or the virtual world is where there's that challenge of mixing all those together because you do have the human interaction but then you you have that remote kind of ecosystem um and nowadays we we see advancements such as the metaverse where you can kind of have all of them together and you can have all of them mixed together and it's uh, coming into a mixed reality or a, a virtual reality kind of thing. Again, this is just from my knowledge and, and our work in the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Um, and I hope that was uh, useful as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Very good input. Other questions? And again, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you or you can write in the chat. And if nothing comes to mind now, as said, you can reach out to me as well later with any questions. And if I can't answer, then I'll reach out to all the partners and they can answer for me. If no further questions, then I want to once again say a big thank you to all our participants, to our speakers for these valuable insights, and once more to our partners for making this hackathon possible. And remember to apply, get acquainted with the website, and you'll be hearing from me in, in your emails shortly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.